good evening each and every one of you present here with us and a very 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 warm welcome to all of you uh first of all a big warm welcome i'd like to extend to brother lenny suarez also who's here with us and uh, for those of you who do not know he's been recently elected as the yfoc coordinator after brother eliot so very warm welcome to brother lenny as well and to all my yfoc family to the north goa online yfoc pray meeting praise god praise god praise the lord for all of this um and um, uh, without reach wasting a lot of time i'd like to uh, let amram take over as he is going to be leading us into praise and worship amram over to you whenever you are ready um okay so let us sign ourselves in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit Uh, let us ask uh, our mama mary to pray and intercede for us hail mary full of grace the lord is with you blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb jesus holy mary mother of god pray for us Bless in us now and at the hour of our death amen yeah so it's a great day great to have you all all over here so let us start this time with the time of praise and worship So Psalms, Psalm eighty six, eighty four says, "For a day in your courts are better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than live in the tents of wickedness." So, with this in mind, as we are all gathered here, in and we are gathered gathered in God's presence here. So let's start by praising and worshiping Him as we take this hymn, "Shine, Jesus, Shine." Lord, the light of your love is shining in the midst of the darkness. Shine, Jesus, light of the world, shine upon us. Set us free by the truth. Now you will do us. Shine, Lord. Shine, Jesus, shine! Fill this land with the Father's glory. Let the Spirit of the King set our hearts on fire. Flow, 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 flow the nation with grace and mercy. Lord, how let there be light. Lord, the light of the Lord be shining in the midst of the dark. Shining, Jesus, light of the world, shining, set us free from the troubling dew. Shine on me, shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land, the Father's glory. Let the Spirit bring, set our hearts on fire. Let the people of the nation. With praise and mercy, Lord of your word, Lord, I have a prayer. Let us unmute and give free praises to our Lord. Praise to Jesus. Praise to God. 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 Praise to God.
Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. At this moment, I request you all to say short praise of thanksgiving to our Lord. Lord, I want to praise you and thank you for all the blessings that you blessed me with in my life. I want to praise you and thank you for keeping my family safe. I want to praise you and thank you for giving me your mother as a beautiful and loving mother who's always there to protect me. I praise you and thank you for the gift of the church, Father, to me. Thank you, Jesus, for your holy name. And thank you for everything. Praise you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank, thank you, Father. Thank, thank, thank you, Lord. Thank, 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 thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord Jesus, I want to thank you for today's day. Thank you for each of our families for protecting us, Lord. Thank you for being with us and providing for us, Lord. Lord, thank you, Lord, for how you've helped me, Lord, to this month in this new place, Lord. Thank you for being with me, for being my strength, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Praise you, Jesus. We glorify your name. Thank you, thank you, Father. We glorify your name, Lord. Thank you, Lord of Lord. Thank you for all that you are, Lord Jesus, to us. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, I do want to thank and praise you, God, for your presence in each of our lives. You're a God of purpose and plan. And you're always doing something new in each of our lives, Lord, as you keep drawing us closer and closer to you. I also want to thank and praise you for this week, Lord God, which has been a struggle for us, Lord, with so many of us falling sick at home, but you have always taken care of us, Lord. You watched over us. Thank you, Lord God, for yet in the midst of all of this, there's so much of peace, there's so much of understanding and the grace and the strength that you give us to just hold forth and continue these days, Lord. You have been with us, you have been providing for us. You are our strength in our weakness. You are a hope in our hopelessness, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. We glorify your name, Thank Lord. You, Thank you for all that you are, Lord. Lord. You are a master, you are a Thank Father, you are a redeemer, Lord. Lord. Thank, Thank you, Father. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah to you, Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord Jesus. Thank, Thank you, Father. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Praise Spirit. Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Let us put all our thanks together and sing this next hymn, Blessed Be Your Name. Let's be. 
every blessing you surrender in you pray. When the darkness goes in the Lord, to I will say, Listen, be the name of our Lord. Listen, be your name. Blessed be the name of our Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Listen, be the name of our Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the glory of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And so the time may come. And the world says it should be. Blessed be the name. And still be the Lord, my love, it's not a way to be in the open way. Bless me. Every blessing you go out of, turn back to me. When the darkness grows, it's in love. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 Lord. Praise Jesus, praise Lord. Hallelujah, praise Lord. Hallelujah. In the book of Psalms, King David prays. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart to revere your name. I give thanks to you, O Lord, my God, with my whole heart, and I will glorify your name forever. At this moment, let us ask God to give us an undivided heart, that we are fully for him. Let us take this hymn, Open the Eyes of My Heart. Open the eyes of my heart. 
At this moment, let us invite the Holy Spirit in this moment, in this time, in our lives, for this meeting. The Lord says, "You can do nothing on your own, but you can do all things through Christ Jesus." It is the Holy Spirit who helps us in our weakness. Bible says you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. At this moment, let us ask our Father in heaven to give us this power from above, for our Father will never say no to us. Let us take this hymn. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power. Live inside me. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Fill me with your power. Live inside me. You're the living water. Never drowning fountain. Come to your and Don't you're the living one. Never die in battle. Don't go there and God's in love. Don't go back and forth. Welcome, Holy Spirit. I am in your presence. Fill me with your power, live inside me, welcome Holy Spirit, I am in your presence, fill me with your power, live inside of me, you're the lame and wrong. Now we're going to go and go so long. Didn't come back and go. You're the lemon one. Now we're going to go. 
As the deer longs for flowing streams, so my soul longs for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Lord, at this time we ask you to give us this thirst and this longing for you, Lord. This deep desire, Lord, to know you and to be with you, Lord. Let us take this hymn as the deer pants. Mm -hmm. Standing at the door, so so long after you you are my strength, I see. You are my strength, I You are my strength, I You are my strength, I the world so so long to you. You are You are my strength, you are my 
Lord, we thank you for this time of praise and worship. Lord, we thank you for your presence with us. Lord, give us wisdom for the upcoming talk that is there, that we may hear your voice to it. Let us conclude. All glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Amen. Thank you very much, Amram. Thank you, Shonal. Thanks to both of you for leading us almost into the presence of the Lord. Thank you very much for preparing us also for this talk. Thank you and God bless you. Um, so, brothers and sisters, as I had already welcomed Brother Lenny again, Lenny in the beginning. For those of you who are not there, we have with us uh, for our sharing today on moral conscience, Brother Lenny Suarez. Now, uh, Brother Lenny Suarez, as I mentioned, is the new coordinator for uh, the youth. So, um, he is, those of you who do not know, he settled, he used to always stay in Mumbai, but he settled in Goa at the moment, and he is a lay teacher very a famous lay preacher and not just lay preacher, a singer, songwriter and also the founder of the nationally acclaimed uh, band by Grace. Besides that, Brother Lenny is also the founder of the Love, Joy and Hope Foundation, which he founded somewhere in 2012 and it's a non-profit organization and uh, uh, for four years at least, Brother Lenny was the national youth leader for the CCR, which is now the GSC. So we welcome Brother Lenny. Thank you, Brother, for making time for us. Thanks, Melanie. Thanks for those kind words. Uh, thanks, uh, Amran and uh, Chanul, for the time of praise and worship. 
it's so nice to be with all of you guys uh, i was waiting for this time when i could meet you all um so the topic that is given uh, is uh, moral conscience and uh, it's something that many have not heard we don't talk of this word conscience uh, though we may many times may use sentences like or oh, you may have heard you know these sayings where people may be saying kind of uh, a guilty conscience pricks the mind or you know my conscience does not allow me to do this or say that or you know uh, i won't do anything against my conscience but many a times we may use this word conscience in trying of actually expressing our feelings it's not really the conscience that we are going to look at or what the teaching of the church tells us or what scripture tells us yeah so what really is conscience and how can we grow how can we have a well formed conscience and uh, as christians as as god's created uh, created beings that we are how are we called to uh, you know keep our conscience clean so that we can hear the voice of god and um, let me just share so what really is moral conscience <clears throat> so first let's look at what moral conscience is not before we really dive into what really moral conscience is and uh, many always mix up you know and have a wrong understanding or a misconception of what really conscience is sometimes many i have heard that they say it is a gut feeling or it is you know it's an instinct and they kind of misjudge that gut feeling you know i'm feeling from inside as a there's an instinct i feel to the conscience it's absolutely not the right thing instinct is something that i you know i go for that moment and i make a decision based on what i feel or i think at that moment it's not the moral conscience yeah we we'll look into what moral conscience is uh, soon later it's not personal preference moral conscience is not uh you know today i have a personal preference to what i basically what teaching of the church i pick and i choose from or what i want how do i want to live my life or what are the areas that i want to offer to the lord and surrender to the lord i have personal preferences personal preferences is not my conscience yes it is not my personal opinion it is not my you know my rights that i have okay this is the right or this is my right feelings uh, definitely it's not my feelings because feelings can always change today tomorrow and it goes by environment surroundings all that is around us definitely it is not goosebumps because many people say oh you know i get goosebumps and i sense the lord saying something or you know it, it, you equated to goosebumps absolutely it is not so there i'm sure there are many other misconception but these are some of the common ones that people may think that this is what conscience is and we have this uh, kind of a gray area and what really conscience is all about many a times we may be in that situation where i want to do some i know what is right but i go the opposite direction i i do not want to say the wrong things but i end up saying the wrong things i do not want to go to this website or this app or uh, you know uh, be resentful or be unforgiving towards someone but i end up doing that yeah we always have this tussle and we always have this tug of war but the one that prompts us telling us uh, tell us that what is right what is wrong what is his direction is the conscience yeah let's look now what really moral conscience let's look a little bit at the catechism of the catholic church because that's where we will truly understand what moral conscience is all about so in the catechism of the catholic church in paragraph 1776 it tells us deep within his conscience man discovers a law which he has not laid upon himself let's park there for some uh, for a second deep within his conscience deep within us uh god has put within us a law now when god created us yeah when we are as human beings we need to understand that we are also spiritual and body yeah we are a spiritual being we are made in the image and likeness of god what is going to stay for all eternity we live on this earth a physical matter so we have a physical body 
which will decompose. And so for us to grow spiritually, to grow in the image and likeness of God, God has given us faculties and gifts to guide us along this journey to become more like him. And so God within us, he has given us this conscience deep within man. And he has laid his law within us. And so the conscience is directing us whether what we do is right or wrong. Let's look ahead. Deep within his conscience, man discovers a law that is God, which he has put within us, which he has not laid upon himself. Man has not created this within himself. God, man has not made this law. It's not me. It is not whatever we have created. It is by God himself. And this we must obey. Yeah, this is very important. Let's go ahead. It's voice ever calling to love and to do what is good and to avoid evil sounds in his heart at the right moment. In other words, at the right moment, when you're making choices, when you're making decisions, when you're thinking what you should do, how you should live your life, what are the, the right disposition of being definitely as a disciple, as a Christian, the conscience will be that voice of God telling you, you must love, you must go the extra mile, you must obey your parents now. You must not delay in your obedience towards your parents or towards reaching out to someone who is in need. Loving someone means accepting a person maybe at your workplace, maybe forgiving that boss or maybe forgiving someone. And you may say, eh, I don't care about it. Maybe someone needs help. And you have said, I'm busy. You know, I don't need. But the voice inside is telling, you know, he needs. You can, you can give that little extra time. And many a times we can just let go of that voice calling to love. It is also will always help us to do what is good. It will always promote us. It will always guide us. It will always prompt us. It will always nudge us to do what is good and also to avoid what is evil. When you're looking at an app and you're looking at something that you're not supposed to see or looking at Netflix or looking at some series or you're looking at some movies which you're not supposed to watch or certain uh, <coughs> you know, things that maybe will distort our, our relationship with the Lord or it will distract us in our relationship with the Lord. The, the conscience, our conscience, the voice of God will kind of guide us. Will, will sound that voice of God. And it's very important for us to learn how to hear the voice of God as we keep growing as a disciple. As we go on, for man has in his heart a law inscribed by God. What is this law? It is the mind of God. It is the character of God. It is who God is. It is God speaking of who he is. It is the most Beautiful and the most holy place. He says his conscience is man's most secret core and his sanctuary. The core of your being, the sanctuary of your being is this place called the conscience. Because that's where the voice of God is. And if the conscience is the voice of God, then we must give it the highest respect. We must try our best to keep it clear so that we can hear the voice of God. Is the conscience, is our conscience a priority for us? Are we leaning on constantly trying to hear the voice of God? Are we leaning on to grow, to understand and know the will of God for us through his conscience? We must work on this, my dear brothers and sisters. There he is alone with God whose voice echoes in his depths. Are we able to hear the voice of God or are we now hearing all other voices in and around us? So how do we discern these voices? Because there is a voice of God. <coughs> I'm so sorry of my cough. There is also the, the voice, my own voice, that is my own voice of my flesh. Because even as we are created, know that we are also created as a sinful being. We have the sin nature in us. And so there is another voice that is there, the voice of the flesh. <coughs> Sorry. There is also the evil voice. There is also the voice of the world that is all around us. And so we have to discern 
from all of these different voices, people's voices, philosophy, psychology, every wrong thought that is there around us, how can we filter and tune ourselves to the voice of God? That is the key. That is the key. And I can tell you, friends, it is, it is what God desires. It is what God wants. It is what God is calling you to come and hear his voice. And God will go the extra mile to draw you in if we move towards that goal. But many a times we can let aside. If you're traveling by a bike or if you're traveling by car, many a times we someone can cut us and we can get upset. Sometimes when we are traveling, we can, oh, I'm late to work. And suddenly the speed just jumps up and we can cut people on the road. But, you know, it is, I am just thinking of my own self. If a cop is there and you don't have your helmet, I mean, you should not be out of your house without your helmet and your license and all the other <laughs> legal things. But does it hurt your conscience? That's my point. Have we become so dulled in our conscience that these small things don't convict us now? There are gray lies and there are there is no gray color lies. Lie is a sin, it is a sin. Period. Every sin is, is deadly and is dangerous. But what is even worse is these sins become dulled. They begin and our conscience becomes hard-heartened. And we fail to hear the promptings of, of God through the conscience. Because there the, the word, uh, the Catechism of the Catholic Church says that there he is alone with God, whose voice echoes in his depths. God is always speaking to us in the core of our being. But am I sensitive to that voice? You see, God wants to guide you. God wants to guide you in every decision and choice that you make so that you may make the right choice and only to see you happy, only to see you blessed. God has this great joy to see you smile and to have a blessed life. God cries when you cry. God aches when you ache. God hurts when you hurt. And he wants you to make the right choices because he knows the end right from the beginning. And he knows that when you choose this road, it will bring blessings in your life. It will lead you to your purpose and calling that you have over your life. Yeah. So conscience, in other words, it is a law that God, it is the voice of God that is given to us deep within our core, which guides us to do what to love, to do what is good and to avoid what is evil. Let's look at the next paragraph. Okay. Uh, 1777 says that moral conscience present at the heart of the person enjoins him at the appropriate moment to do good and to avoid evil. You know, we just said that earlier, but this is what I like. It also judges particular choices, approving those that are good and denouncing those that are evil. Every choice, every choice that you make, remember that every moment of your life, every second, you are making choices after choices, decisions after decisions. <clears throat> even if it is some things very small and minuscule, you are making some choice and decision that will always lead you, as I said, to your destiny. Yeah, the, Our conscience will always look at those choices and decisions and tell you whether they are right, they are wrong. Is it from the Lord? Is it glorifying the Lord? And with it, will it really bless your life? Is it going to help you to grow spiritually? Is it going to make you more and more like Christ? Are you going to bloom and become the person that God wants you to be, even by the smallest choices that God uh, gives you in every moment of your life? Yeah, It bears witness to the authority of truth in reference to the supreme good to which the human person is drawn and it welcomes the commandments. Now, for us living at this age, we are blessed with so much of you know, uh, scripture, and we have the teaching of the church, the tradition of the church. We have the scriptures. We talk about the law, the Ten Commandments. We have the teachings and of Jesus, the Sermon of the Mount, uh, and the Beatitudes, and all of scripture that guides us and helps us to, you know, to know our conscience, to help our conscience, to form our conscience. If you look in the previous years, in the you know, in the early testaments, they never had any of that. 
And we look at that. Uh, the last line says, when he listens to his conscience, the prudent man can hear God speaking. The prudent man. We are called to be prudent. Yeah, by the wisdom of the Lord. And how that can happen when we begin to know the mind of God. When we begin to know the mind of God through the teachings of the church. And that's how we can live a prudent life. And it says that when you begin to form yourself and form your conscience, you'll able to hear God speaking clearly. You can hear God speaking to you. Let this sink in, my dear brothers and sisters. God will speak to you. You can just be silent and you can think about your choice and decision and you can hear God speaking to you, telling you, or it's an impression or maybe a nudge or maybe uh, everyone is unique and in a personal way, God will speak to you. But definitely it will give you clarity to telling you what is good and what is evil and to draw you close to Christ. Yes. I love seeing Thomas Aquinas and he says that the natural law is nothing other than the light of understanding placed in us by God. This light and this understanding of, of God, of who we are called to be. Yes, it is this understanding through it. We know what we must do and what we must avoid. God has given this light or law at the creation. This law is given to us right at the time of creation, Adam and Eve. This law was given and it is, in, it is given to us. We all have this. It's not only Christians or Catholics. Every human being has the law inscribed in, uh, in a person. Every human being. And we are called to live by this law, this conscience that God has given us. The Greek word, to share, or, uh, the Greek word for conscience is to share in the knowledge of a thing. The Bible will naturally mean joint knowledge held in common with God. In other words, the knowledge, the mind of God begins to prompt me and tell me of how I should live my life. In other words, conscience is the voice of God. And so I have God speaking to me, guiding me in every step of my way. That is what the conscience and so it is so very important that I begin to grow my conscience. I begin to align my life towards my conscience and allowing it to lead me and guide me along the pathway so that I can become more and more like Christ. Romans chapter 2, 14, 15 tells us that when Gentiles who had have not the law at that time, they did not have the law of Moses, the Gentiles at that time do by nature by the law requires they are a law to themselves in other words they never had any 10 commandments and the uh, teaching of the church or traditions how we have today they had nothing they had to go by the law that is within them and so they were law by themselves they show that what the law requires is written on their hearts while their conscience also bears witness <coughs> You could tell their conscience guiding them by the way their actions, by the way the choices and decisions they would take. Yeah, it would conflict with their thoughts and maybe their perceptions and every other thing. But in the end, your actions determines whether you're following your, your conscience or no. Many a times you may have taken the wrong decision and the wrong action Yet the, your conscience will tell you this was wrong, what you did. Yeah. So it's very important to keep our conscience clear. So that doesn't mean maybe if I have taken wrong step, we all make mistakes. We all fall. And we'll all always be in that place where we are falling and we are rising up again. Your conscience will tell you, hey, Lenny, this is what you did wrong. This is how you spoke wrongly. This is how you behave wrongly. Yeah, but the, our conscience does that so that we can turn back in repentance. Yeah, we need to ask ourselves is my conscience dead? Is my conscience hardened? Is my conscience dull? Is my conscience really alive and active? Where am I in that spectrum? To what degree is my conscience? 
John Henry Newman, St. John Henry Newman says it the best. He says what conscience is. Conscience is the messenger of him who both in nature and in grace speaks to us behind the veil and teaches and rules us by his representatives. Conscience is the ab-original vicar of Christ. Is the ab-original vicar of Christ. Yeah. Who is the vicar of Christ for us here on earth? Anyone can tell me who is the vicar of Christ? Each one of oh. us. Okay. Somebody else said what? Pope. Yeah. The Pope is the vicar of Christ. Yeah. But here what St. John Henry Newman tells us is conscience is the aboriginal vicar of Christ. He is the original voice of God who resides in us. Yeah. And he is a messenger. He is the voice who speaks to us, teaches us and helps us to rule and be the person that God wants us to be. <clears throat> Pope Francis tells us the problem is not that we are sinners. The problem is not, not repenting of sin, not being ashamed of what we have done. That's the problem. Are you with me? The problem today is, friends, that our conscience becomes so dead that we are not ashamed of some of the things that we are doing. It is not convicting us. It is not hurting us that we hurt God. And so the church definitely, you know, divides sins as venial sins and mortal sins. But sometimes we give into venial sins. Hey, it's okay. It is okay. It is okay. Doesn't matter. No problem. And so after some time, we don't even, you know, get convicted of those normal sins, those venial sins that we are doing. It turns out that are slowly and subtly, we are dulling our conscience. And after some time, we give into mortal sins. It's a slow journey. Let me give an example. You make, you take a frog and you throw a frog in boiling water. The frog, what it'll do? It'll immediately jump out. You take a frog and you put him in lukewarm water and in slow temperature boil that water. What will happen? The frog will not even know what has happened to that water and it will be cooked and die. In a similar manner, friends, our conscience, it is so very slowly, if we can, if we give into sins, we slowly get to a place where we are not ashamed of those sins. It goes into dulling our conscience and after some time, it becomes hard-hearted. That's why the psalmist and the scripture says, Lord, our hearts are hardened. Give us a clean heart. Give us a heart of flesh. There's a heart of repentance crying out to the Lord. And yes, friend, God loves us and he wants to give us a clean conscience. And it is only when we come before in repentance before the Lord. So Pope Francis says, the problem is not we are sinners. We all know that we are sinners. We all go for confession. We all even go and we know about this word repentance. But the problem today is that we are not even ashamed. We are not even sorry of what we are doing. We are just saying it. I'm sorry for this, 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 this. It's like on parrot, we just recite like on litany. These are all my sins. But I am not even ashamed and I'm not even sorry of what I have done. There's a big difference of just ratifying some sins or really repenting ashamedfully that, Lord, I'm sorry. Yes, I must see where I have fallen. In Mark 6, 14, if you look at some, we look at some scriptures now. King Herod, you know, heard of Jesus, of his name. He was healing and, you know, he was doing all these miraculous signs and he was raising the dead to life and all of that. And all of these stories came to Herod and Herod said, what? It's not this Jesus and all of that. It is. John the Baptist who is being raised back to life. This John the Baptist who I beheaded, he has come back to life. And he goes on to say, you know, I cut his head because of 
this girl who danced and seduced and aroused and i was so pleased that you know he is conscious was so dead but she asked for the head of john the baptist and this was pricking his conscience he could always see the bloody head blood on the platter and that head always in his mind this man who was a holy man and now when he hears about jesus no no it has to be john the baptist who has been raised to life he is that one so that he can get cleared of his conscience scripture talks about this when we know when we just look at king david no david was a man of the god's own heart and god even says that but there's a time where you know scholars tell us that he kind of slipped and what caused him to sin was what he did before that earlier when when there was war and there was battle david was there in the thick of the battle now he is king he has got everything all with him and everything battle is on he is at home resting relaxing and enjoying life and as he is getting into sloth and laziness and idleness he takes a walk on the terrace and he sees this woman bathing he wants her now you see how subtly from a man who was sensitive that he could have killed Saul but he says no one will touch this man because he is anointed by god he was so sensitive a man was after his own death because of him he had to run away and all his family everybody ran away but he was sensitive that he did not want to hurt god now he is idle he is lazy fine he is become slothful and now he gives into sin and for one sin leads to a cover up of another sin another sin gets her husband in the front of the battle gets him killed tries to hush up the sin and this is how many a times we ourselves do it as well we try to hush up sins we try to tell ourselves that you know what it is okay sometimes we just give it a blind look we just don't even want to look at certain sins that we want to commit but the conscience deep within us is trying to remind us hey you know you need to repent god is giving you a chance god wants to forgive you god wants to give you a clean slate repent what you did was wrong what you behaved what you did what you could have done the sins what you have done and the sins of omission the sins of omission the things which you could have done which could have blessed someone else you have become insensitive a prophet had to come nathan and had to tell david and then he repents and god gives him a clean heart the bible talks about certain various conscience as we spoke earlier yeah we have a conscience but also it speaks about an evil conscience yeah let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith having a heart sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water so we can have an evil conscience because we need to be very careful friends what are we watching today what are the things that we are taking in will form us the more of what you take in that is what who you will become there's a line that says the more you what you think is who you will become as you think it is who you will be yeah in other words what is your mind taking in if i am watching uh you know pornography again and again i become addicted towards it and then i become a slave towards it and that is what then an evil conscience begins to take rise and grips me if i'm watching uh you know series which are violent and it is all a filthy language or maybe it is uh maybe watching series which are having these wrong uh philosophies or wrong principles of life then that begins to take hold of my life how much of the word of god is what i'm taking in how much am i reading of the spiritual books or how many teachings that i'm listening to i make it a point friends every day okay my reading of the word and my studying of the word is i mean there is no discussions there 
I'm always reading. I'm always studying. Every day I listen to one talk, minimum one talk, minimum. I use every area that I'm, you know, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm going for a walk, when I'm traveling, I, I love to exercise. And when I mean exercise, I don't go to the gym, uh, but I love to play any activity. So I, now I, I play a lot of badminton. So in the mornings, when I'm even traveling, going to play badminton, I'm listening to one talk. When I'm coming back, if I've not finished, I'll finish that talk. I'll come back. You won't believe. But there are times when I'm even in uh, in the shower, either I'm listening to some talk or I'm listening to some song. Every time, if I'm doing something, I'm listening to something. It doesn't mean all the time I have something in my ears. There are many moments that I'm just silent and I'm trying to listen to the voice of God. My prayer time, when I'm having my personal prayer time, it is my personal time with God daily. At home, all my kids, you know that I run a home and we have so many children. All my children, are. I wake them up at 6 o'clock. 6.30, they all go for their prayer time. All of them. They all have to read the word of God. I teach them and I've told them how they can, you know, you can, you're, you're supposed to have your prayer time. My smallest one, Sarojini, she will get up. She's still learning. She'll get up. She'll start praying. In 15 minutes, she goes back to sleep. There and there for her prayer time. But you see, she's learning. She will get there in time. But these are disciplines. But even she is reading the word of God. All of them by heart scriptures. When we have our family time prayer in the evenings, with the angelus, it's a rosary, it's a divine mercy. At the end of that, we will all recite scriptures. And every month or two, we will add one one scripture to that book that they have. We must begin to not just read, but study scripture. And allow the scripture to take hold of us. And remember the scriptures of God's promises, God's principles, God's disciplines, God's, uh, you know, uh, there are verses that guides us as youth of what we should do and how we should live our lives. How am I purifying my, myself, friends? I want to encourage you, I want to challenge you. Start reading and start uh, studying scripture. I want to encourage you, listen to one talk. You may say, Lenny, I don't have the time. I'm sure we can make that time in your travel time. Or even, I'm not saying try to listen for one hour and whole talk. Take it in breaks, no problem. Listen bit by bit, doesn't matter. But that word will transform you. It will encourage you. It will inspire you. It will challenge you. But move in that direction. Habits that are tiny, but if it is done consistently, it begins into a great result. Yeah. Most of the time we are procrastinating. Yes, you know, I, I want to do this. I have a desire and I, I have, uh, you know, a want. I want to do this. I desire and it just remain at desires and wants. Break it into small bites and you see how it will transform and change your life. Titus 1.15 it tells us unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their mind and conscience is defiled. We can defile our conscience by what we take in and how we live with our conscience, friends. We can dull our conscience. We can, uh, uh, we can corrupt our conscience. And so many a times when that happens, we begin to misread. It is like a clear note of C. But if that note is cracked, you may not get that clear note. Are you with me? In a similar way, a conscience, if it is defiled, it the defilement begins to lead us. Let me give an example. Before I met the Lord, I stopped believing in God. I said, God does not exist because the circumstances all around. And we will have youth who are, you know, have gone through this situation because of their environment around, because of their family background, because of the friend circle that they have, because of what they are watching and who they have become. Their conscience is defiled. So my conscience was defiled. I, I began to believe now God does not exist. I began to sort out for affection and acceptance in all the wrong areas to the extent I was going to join a satanic church. Can you see? 
a conscience that is defiled can lead you. And I thought what I was doing was right. I thought it is okay if you know to follow if Satan is there and I'm supposed to have a good life, it is okay. That's why many of people who have defiled or because their hurts have clouded them, their discouragements have discouraged them so much that they also want to end up committing suicide. They cannot hear their conscience. So we can defile our conscience. And sometimes even the evil one can take hold of our sinfulness and take us to the edge and destroy ourselves. So we must be very, very careful and keep our conscience right. So how do we achieve a well-formed conscience? And I'll end with this. And this is very vital for us friends. Firstly, growing and having a conscience, a clean conscience, it's a journey. It is not a one day. It's not a two day. It's a lifelong journey to have a right conscience and to have a well-formed conscience. It's a journey that we are all in. Conscience must be properly formed to know and judge rightly. So we all have a conscience, but if it is not formed well, it cannot guide us well. Let me give you an example. When I came to Goa here, uh, I, I did not speak the Konkani as well as you do uh, here in Konkani. Uh, Bombay, we, we born and brought up only English. My grandmother, we would speak to a little bit and I should just have some broken ways of speaking in Mangalorean Konkani. I'm come to Goa and I'm trying to speak in Konkani. And so one day I called a plumber home and he's from the village and his Konkani was was very different from the other Konkani. I don't know. It, it was it was very like a very deep village kind of a beautiful Konkani, but I was barely trying to understand him. And now I'm trying to speak to him in my Konkani and he's looking at me and he's, he's trying to say something he can't understand, I can't understand. It is the same with the conscience. My Konkani was not well formed. I did not have the right vocabulary. I did not have the right grammar. I did not have the right sentences. I did not have the right words to express in that language best known. Our conscience, if it is not well formed in the right manner, it cannot guide us. Are you with me? So we must form our conscience. It is a gift God has given us, but it is my responsibility to form it. And it is a lifelong journey. Yeah. So how few points just to help us. John 14, 15, Jesus told the apostles, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. You will keep my commandments. You will obey my commandments. You will deny yourself. You will pick up your cross and follow me. We keep his commandments by denying ourselves. We are born with flesh. We are a sinful generation, right? Because of the sin nature of Adam and Eve. And we have this nature of leaning towards what is comfortable, that is sinfulness. It is difficult. We need to die to ourselves to, to do the right thing. It's easy for us to fall to sin. Yes. So, but the Lord says that you must keep, if you love me, if you're calling yourself to be as a disciple, if you're calling to be as a believer, as a Christian, you need to keep my commandments. Because when you keep my commandments and you live by them, your conscience will be clear and you hear my voice. So how do I do that? Firstly, by prayer. We need to soak ourselves in prayer, friends. See to it that we are having our personal prayer time. And when I'm saying personal prayer time, it is not, oh, I'm just gone in and I've come out. I'm making a point that I'm having my personal prayer time, but I have encountered God in that time. I have met God. I have this deep communion with God. I have truly surrendered every area of my life to God. I have made Jesus the Lord of all the areas. He is Lord of all or he is not Lord at all. It's very clear. It is not Lord in this area, in that area, in these few, few areas of my life. No, in every area, he is to be the Lord of my life. And I come to my personal prayer and I say, Lord, I want you to be the Lord of this area, which I'm finding it very difficult. I do not want to give this away, Lord, but I ask you grace for me. Uproot it from me, Lord. Destroy this, this area, this attitude, maybe the sinfulness that has gripped me. 
Maybe the sin that is like a thorn in my flesh help me Lord to overcome. Prayer, it is coming to God in a personal relationship. It is reading and studying the word of God. If you really want to have your conscience and you really want the law of God to guide you, you need to have the law, the mind of God, the word of God forming you. We form our conscience mainly by the word of God that is given to us. By reading the word of God, by reflecting on it as a mirror, telling me from this scripture now how I must change. What are the areas? How I can be like you, Jesus, through the scripture? And I must introspect. It's only when I introspect and I make the changes, be doers of the word, not just readers of the word. When I begin to change my life, that's where slowly the tuning is like a fine tuning. You know, when you tune our guitars, we have to fine tune it to get to the right tone or the right note. Similar manner, that is what will happen. Through the sacrament, especially the sacrament of confession, be regular to your sacrament of confession. Get a clean slate. Don't have anything that you are carrying within you that is a block. God has given us these sacraments so that we can have a clear conscience. Second, I want to encourage you as youth, spiritual reading. Every month, I read one book. Every month. I remove my quota of my books before the year starts and I try to achieve them. I have different kind of books on leadership, on praise and worship, on also some of the good corporate leadership books because I, there is a lot of research that I also try to understand from. I read a lot of discipleship books. I read some good Catholic books, whether it's Bishop Barron, whether it's uh, 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 Professor Brent, uh, these are all these great Scott Han, all these great authors that I read and I study from. Uh, there are books on character, how you can grow in character. And there are different various books that I keep along the entire year. And I take one book in different seasons as I'm growing. I want to encourage you, friends. If it is not one book per month, at least one book in two months, you must be able to, to read. Now, I'm not saying five pages, ten pages, ebooks, a proper book. Yeah, what is the need of the art that you need to read now in this as a disciple, with his leadership, with his praise and worship, maybe a gift and a charism? Choose that one book and start reading and start introspecting and start growing in that area. When you read, you are growing. Okay, there's a beautiful line which I really which I love. It says, When you stop learning, you stop growing. The day you stop learning, you have stopped growing. That's a clear principle. Yes. The other thing is grow in virtues. What are the virtues that I need to grow in? Yes. What are the areas that I, am, I need to grow that God is pointing, the Holy Spirit is pointing. This is the area that I need to grow. When I grow in that area, it is as if I'm rooming that one scalp that has covered my conscience. Yeah, it's like peeling off one skin, a thick skin off and because it is replicated. I was very rude before I met the Lord. I could make fun of someone just to make everybody laugh. I was that way. I was very rude. And when I met the Lord, the Lord began to point this one area. And I said, Lord, help me to become an encourager. From then on, I just went on only encouraging and encouraging and encouraging. Today has become my lifestyle. I cannot but encourage. And so it is like that one peel that is gone. And so now the Holy Spirit will always easily prompt me, you know, be encouraging. Encourage this one, encourage that one. And so it's very natural. So what are the virtues? What is this one area? Choose one. Choose one area that you want to work on with and work on that area. It could be maybe something that you need to give up. Maybe it is an attitude of gratitude. Maybe it is maybe just to show respect and say some nice things to your parents every day. Say something nice. We take our parents for granted. Yeah. Maybe it is someone else that needs, you know, uh, maybe one area that will add value to the person that you need to be. The, th the, the next is prayer, spiritual reading, grow in virtues. The next is godly fellowship. This what we have here is godly fellowship. 
This is where we encourage one another. We cannot grow alone as living in an island. No man can live in an island. As it, you know, we sing that song. We need one another. We need good fellowship. We need good uh, people who will challenge us and help us and encourage us. And the last is have a spiritual director, have a spiritual mentor who will guide you, who will encourage you, who has already been on that path. You know, this person is a holy one. He or she could be a priest and a confessor. Yeah. But have a spiritual mentor or a director because this, and it's like having a coach. If an athlete really wants to really be good, he will hire a coach. And that coach will push and guide you and lead you to the place that you want to be. Yeah, so prayer, spiritual reading, grow in virtues, godly fellowship, spiritual mentor. I'll end here, my dear brothers and sisters, but I want to say this, conscience if it is so very important, if it is the voice of God, we need to respect it with all of our being. We need to take it that this is really vital and important for my own growth. God wants to speak to me and God has given us this gift. It is my responsibility to well form my conscience. And at every moment of my choice and decisions, I ask the Lord through my conscience. Lord, is this right? Am I making the right decisions? Maybe just bow our heads. Let's turn to the Lord. Maybe my conscience is dulled in certain areas. There are sins that I don't give a second look. I take for granted. I have lost being sensitive to the small areas of sinfulness that I keep doing. Maybe it is lies. Maybe it is giving excuses. Maybe not reaching out. Maybe not being caring enough, loving enough. The Lord wants to give us a clean conscience. A conscience like a, like a little child, pure. Just talk to the Lord right now and tell, Lord, I truly want to have a clean conscience. I want to hear your voice, Lord. Have mercy upon me. Cleanse me with your precious blood. Help me to have a well-formed conscience. Give me the grace to make this a priority, Lord God, because I really want to hear your voice guiding me and leading me. Mama Mary, you are always there by our side, praying for us and pointing us to be more and more like your son. Mama Mary, we ask you, pray to Jesus to give us the grace to cleanse us with his precious blood of every sin and give us a new flesh, a new heart, a clear conscience. As we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst all women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary Mother, Mother of God, God pray for us sinners, Lord, now Lord, and in the power of our death. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you all, brothers and sisters. Thank you so much, brother, for this powerful yeah breaking of the word and a lot of knowledge about the conscience yes. and yes uh any questions anyone uh, you want to ask brother lenny please go ahead all have a clear conscience now i think Hi, brother. Yeah. Uh, could you like uh, uh, differentiate like between like a lax and a scrupulous conscience and like how to find the middle ground? Uh, you mean a slack in the con uh, in a conscience? Like some people like uh, have scrupulosity, like 
too much a scrupulous conscience and uh, like a very lax conscience sometimes like we get scrupulous and sometimes like we take things too lightly so how to not be too scrupulous also like yeah i i think uh, it all begins by uh, uh, starting where we are first is to acknowledge where i am to understand uh, to commit sincere honesty uh, before the lord and saying lord this is truly who i am yeah i am uh, i need to introspect in my own life first looking to the 10 commandments which is a great help for us as a guide for us uh, you know and also looking to the uh, sermon of the mount which will be a great help to us or the beatitudes they give us as a light to look into my own life have i slacked have i uh, you know uh, given my best that i need to do in my given situations uh, being very sensitive and at the same time it is a journey no saint has accomplished perfection in having a clear conscience it's a journey even they have struggled we will struggle okay so there will be times when we fall and we have been insensitive but the goal is to press on paul says i strive like an athlete and i press on to the goal i press on towards that goal to become more and more like christ yeah so along the journey we begin to allow the holy spirit to guide us and to convict us and a clean repentance so for us to grow from a slack or a kind of a lazy or you know a very casual uh, conscience it is truly repent and repent and bring the change it's a slow journey i take one thing at a time one area at a time and allow god to build me slowly slowly just like a tree that grows very slowly and the fruits come very slowly the fruit will come but it's a journey as we go with the lord hand in hand yeah that makes sense yeah well, thank you anyone else wants to ask any questions brother lenny just to add i think uh, what brother was saying the law and the commandments is the mind of god that helps us to yeah to get the clear conscience to work on it so the laws and the commandments yeah and as you said to grow in virtues take one by one area at a time maybe and then as the small habit as we start as the habit grows it will it will help us to find to yeah anyone else wants to ask any questions okay well i've got it right so i think yeah so no questions then i would like to thank brother benny once again for taking up this talk and also even in the time when you were unwell to prepare and also and thanks so much brother and we live, look forward to your uh, assistance and uh, guidance as we go along this journey sure and yes uh any announcement uh shonal melani we have i think yeah just no, i don't think i don't think so yeah melani, just do you have any announcement for the yeah tuesday's meeting uh, intercessory meeting which is online 
every Tuesday at 7, 7 p.m., North Goa and South Goa. So please do join uh, to intercede for our youth, for, our, for the whole world. And uh, yeah, every Sunday, our online meetings uh, at 4 p.m. And uh, South Goa, it's 11.30 uh, offline at Grace Church Hall. Yeah, those were the announcements. And uh, it's time of fellowship. So if you have anything to share, everyone, please, you can turn on your cameras, you can turn on your mics and talk. You can, now at least you can ask anything to, if you have any questions to Brother Lenny to know about his new journey with us as a new coordinator for YFUC Goa. Hi, everyone. Uh, hi. Yeah, hi, my hi, uh, videos. Abhi. Abhi? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, hi, Brother Rani. Uh, thank you so much for that question. Uh, uh, seriously, thank you so much uh, for that thing. Very, 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 very nice. 